Hey there, it is January the 4th, 2021. I'm trying to work on my posture. And it is 2.23 p.m. And this is post my first anxiety appointment. So I found a string on the ground and now I can't stop playing with it. Uh, really quick though, since this is in the background, my last update, I told Joel that I had picked up something from Target <laughs> and I forgot to tell him, but this is all that it is. It's just a little pack of onesies, but isn't it cute? Baby stuff is just adorable. I like to buy some matching pants. I like to buy newborn stuff because it's super cute, but most of our babies didn't fit a newborn when they were born. So I got three months because that is more realistic. Anyways, the appointment went well. It lasted a little over an hour and a half. I had the expectation of going in and like easing into the appointment, not really just diving in head on to like all the tough stuff. And I don't know if that was the intention, like their intention, or if it was just the way that it played out, but um, it was it was definitely the way that it felt and I was not emotionally prepared for that. Not that it was a bad thing. I think that it was needed. It was kind of like ripping off that Band-Aid. But, and I'm a crier to begin with. Pregnancy or not, I just, I cry anytime I have to verbalize things that are tough emotionally. So I spent an hour and a half crying and then I cried the whole way home. And at that point, I don't even know why I cried, but I was crying. And I knew that this was gonna happen because it's who I am. So I did not put on any makeup um, before that appointment. And, and I, obviously I haven't since then either. It's actually my shower day because I don't shower every day. It's bad for your hair and your skin. So it's my shower day. So there was no point in putting on makeup anyways. But the appointment went well. Uh, she gave me a little bit of a homework assignment to do. And it basically is just, you know, in the moments of feeling anxious and fear and just anxiety in general, like what, like, do you hear from God? Like what's happening in those moments in relation to him? Do you find peace? Do you find comfort? What is he saying? Things of that nature. So that's what I'm going to work on until next week when I go back. And then she would like to, um, touch a little bit on dealing with some grief that I never really processed. Tears, it's immediate. I'm telling you, like I am a mess. So, um, and I was, that was part of it that I was not prepared for. So, and I don't want to do it. If I'm being honest, I don't want to do it. And I know it's tough and that's why I don't want to do it. And I don't, nobody wants to feel negative emotions or negative thoughts and feelings, all the stuff that isn't fun. Why would you want to do that? Why would you be willing to go through those emotions? And I'm going to have to, and I don't want to. And it, I feel like a two-year-old who's thrown a temper tantrum, who is just like, I don't want to. <laughs> like, why not just ignore it and continue to bury it? Oh, I know, because that's why I'm in the situation I'm in now. So I know it's not beneficial to, to go the way that I've been doing things, but I am, it's tough y'all. It is tough and, it, and it's only one week and it's tough. So there is that. Um, I will say that I kind of trusted the process with finding a counselor uh, and felt very secure and comforted and that the Lord would find the right person for me or that I would just, I don't know, like it, I just didn't feel this urge to control that and, and figure out everything I could about the other person. I, and I kind of left that in his hands and knowing that the right thing would come about. I don't know. I just, this, I just knew if that makes sense. I knew that it would be okay. I did not know it was going to be as okay as it was though. And that caught me off guard. The counselor that I ended up with, um, I think is a huge blessing in disguise. I think that there was 
a lot of intention behind it and, and not necessarily on either one of our parts. So um, I'm really happy about that. I have a hard time trusting other people and trusting processes in general. <laughs> Anything that I can't control, um, basically I have a hard time trusting. So, um, but for some reason, like I said, I just, I felt very trusting of this process and I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. So I am excited to see where the next several weeks lead between her and I and how this whole process develops. But um, I, I cried a lot on the way home. As I mentioned, a lot of that was happy tears. A lot of it was relief. Uh, a lot of it was just trying to process everything and I'm still doing that. I came home to an empty house. My husband took the kids to go run a few errands while I was at my appointment. Um, and an empty house for me is hard because that's when my brain starts to, I start thinking about things and, and it usually involves stuff that I don't want to think about. So a lot of fear and anxiety, but I have this and this is helping. <laughs> so I get to talk about it and not really let my mind go places that I don't want it to go. So I'm excited for what is to come. I don't know when my next midwife appointment is going to be. I did see, thanks to social media, that a lot of them are getting the COVID vaccine and that's not something that I will be doing. I do feel like it should be an informed consent, a choice, um, but I don't feel like there's a lot of informed consent happening with this vaccine because it is so new. And I think a lot of people are rushing out to get it because of their jobs and the fear mongering and the media and, and, and everything else. Um, but nonetheless, like it's a choice and it should be a transparent, informed choice. But with that said, that's kind of where, uh, my midwives fall and a lot of them have gotten it. And I know that because of social media. So I did miss my last appointment. I was going to reschedule it for sometime soon, but I think I'm actually going to wait because I'm not comfortable going around them with them having just gotten the vaccine. And I'm not scared of COVID, but I do, I am concerned that with the vaccine, they will be, you know, carriers of it. They will be protected, but they, they can still carry it and pass it on to, uh, to others. I do feel confident in saying that I've already had COVID. Um, so like I said, I'm not really worried about getting it. I don't know if you can get it twice. Nobody really knows anything for certain. So I don't like saying, I oh, know I can't when you don't know, but I, I, I do feel comforted and, and not being concerned about getting COVID. So, or even if I did get COVID, I don't think that it's going to be an issue. Get COVID again. We didn't do testing and I, I'm not going to do testing. So I just am not very comfortable going around them since they did just get the vaccine. So I think I'm gonna postpone postpone my appointment for a little bit, um, give it about six weeks, um, kind of check in on everybody else, see if they got the vaccine, what they're doing on social media and posting, and then kind of go from there. Um, my next appointment, they're kind of pointless at this point. Everything that they do, I can do here at home and it's all kind of common sense stuff for me. But the one thing that I will need their assistance with is with my 28 week appointment. That's when I do my, my big blood uh, draw and I check all my iron and blood stuff. Um, that's when my body or women in general, when they're pregnant tend to get depleted. So it's a, it's a pivotal point in pregnancy for me because I need to adjust my meds, my diet, my lifestyle in general. And I don't know how much of that and, and what exactly needs to be swayed a bit until I get those test results. That 28 week um, blood draw is pretty important for me. So I will go and have that done. I don't necessarily need to go into their office to do it though. I can go to any um, lab place to do it and have it drawn directly there without having to go into their clinic. So I'm not worried about getting it done. It just, it will need to get done at that point in time. Aside from that, there's nothing else new that is going on. Joel has his appointment tomorrow or the next day with his therapist. And um, it's the year of 2021. We've got to start taking care of ourselves, especially with COVID and 
our eighth baby coming on the way, whether we want to admit it or not, like there are stresses in our life and we do have a full plate between expecting our eighth baby, our eighth baby having a, a potential uh, chromosome disorder with us being back in school, having full-time jobs. It is a lot. I feel like we handle it a lot better than other people that we see, but um, it's still a lot to process. And I hope with his appointment, I did address it with mine. I hope with his appointment, he talks up, or not talks up, I hope that he brings up this baby's medical condition. We did agree to not share it. Um, that was more so his decision than mine. However, and I say this because I absolutely do respect his decision and his reasoning behind it is extremely valid um and and i support that and if it was the other way around i would want him to support me so uh we didn't share it we didn't share it with friends we didn't share it with family we didn't share it with anybody my counselor is the first person to know about it and and that's today so um so there's that but where Joel and I differ and we're struggling a lot here lately, me, I'm struggling a lot here lately, is that when I try to talk to him about it, because he's the only person I have to talk about it, he doesn't want to talk about it. And I feel like he is in denial and I don't think he realizes that yet. Um, for him, there's this chance that this baby does not have that chromosomal disorder, our genetic test showed like 99 point whatever percent that he has it but when we went in to go see our geneticist they use a different formula and even though they said you know we use a different formula it looks like this and it has the results of 66 percent chance however it's the same thing as 99 percent chance like what that doesn't even make sense <laughs> what are you talking about all Joel heard was okay cool there is this 30 to 40 percent chance that my kid doesn't have it that's a high chance he, he heard what he wanted to hear. And, um, I, I don't really say anything about that to him. I mean, I have, but like, it's just something that he needs to process on his own. And again, I respect that and I'm trying to give him the time to do so. Um, he does need to do that on his own. And I hope that is something that he brings up at his appointment. However, it kind of puts me in a bind because I can't talk to him about it because he's not ready to talk about it. Not in the same way. I know my physical and emotional limitations and I don't want to have to address all of this once this baby is here. I want to have doctors lined up. I want to have a potential action plan with us being very holistic. There's going to be some things that we automatically rule out. We don't know the severity and we will not know the severity of his chromosomal issues or disorders until he is here and we have him tested, which is just a simple blood draw. It's not a, a big issue. It doesn't need to even be done immediately. It can wait a couple of weeks if need be. Um, but I want to have a game plan of the sorts, you know, at least a list of doctors to call and, and where to start. I don't want to have to do all that once he's here. Once he's here, I want to enjoy him and just love and snuggle and not have to worry immediately um, and just because all that stuff is going to fall on my shoulders anyways. He doesn't, I don't know how to look that stuff up and I don't like making phone calls and just your, I think, typical man <laughs> response, which is fine. Um, I can handle that. I just don't want to have to handle it postpartum. I want to do it now and I would like his support and he is not ready to offer that support because I feel like he is in denial. So Maybe I'll get him to do one of these videos and talk about it from his perspective. I'm sure it's completely different than my perspective of his perspective, <laughs> but um, I was happy to be able to talk about that at my appointment today and kind of try to process a little bit of that. So I hope he does the same. And then maybe we will actually get somewhere with this baby. Let me, I am in, oh, my back just cracked. I'm in very comfy clothes because again, we are doing my shower day today. Let me pull everything up. So here's my baby. There you go. Now you can kind of see everything. I don't usually get stretch marks on my stomach. I haven't had any. I don't anticipate on getting any, but that doesn't mean that it cannot happen. I just get them all back here and all down the backs of my legs. I just don't get them here. You can kind of see a couple probably 
right around this mark. I don't know. I'm not quite sure where exactly they start back there, but they're back there and there's quite a few of them. So that's my update for today. Bye.